Hey guys, this is Dodoid. So today we're going to be finishing up our History of Silicon Graphics series with the seventh and final part, going all the way from 2001's Banana 2000 project and Fuel, all the way up to the demise of the company in uh, 2009. So uh, this is going to be a long episode, let's get right into it. We return to our story in late 2001. Though SGI has spent the last few years filling in both sides of its dual-platform strategy, there's little doubt that the eventual plan is to transition fully to Itanium, even in spite of the SGI 750's catastrophic yet almost silent failure. That, however, didn't mean that there was no more demand for MIPS products. In fact, two new MIPS products were in the works. The first was codenamed Banana 2000, illustrated here by an actual banana. Intended as a successor to the O2, the Banana 2000 was the brainchild of SGI employee Casey Leadham and featured a dual-core Broadcom MIPS processor, a first for SGI who had previously relied on multiple individual processors for multi-threading. Unlike previous SGI systems, Banana 2000 used NVIDIA graphics connected via either PCI Express or a proprietary NVIDIA bus. Due to PCI Express first being introduced to the public in 2003, this makes the proprietary bus a far more likely option. Unfortunately, the Banana 2000 project was killed by management in favor of Itanium at a different MIPS project. The other project, codenamed Asterix, was a far less ambitious desktop version of SGI's SN1 server architecture. Designed to use a single CPU and built in a standard Palo Alto Designs PA810 case, the same as was used on the SGI 230, Asterix was far from SGI's most powerful product, in some cases even being outperformed by the Octane 2. On January 29, 2002, Asterix was released as the SGI Fuel. Intended to fit between the Octane 2 and O2+, the Fuel is frequently said to have been planned to be SGI's last MIPS workstation before a full transition to Itanium would take place. While this directly contradicts the February 12th press release in which SGI states that the new faster R14000A demonstrates our long-term commitment to MIPS technology-based product lines, it is quite likely SGI was only trying to avoid jeopardizing their new products. Though SGI had failed at Itanium with the SGI 750, the plan was still to transition fully to it. With a complete lack of any Itanium products following the cancellation of the 750, SGI was ready to introduce their first true Itanium replacement for a MIPS product, starting with the Origin 3000. On January 7th, 2003, SGI introduced the Altix 3000 and Altix 350 line of Linux-powered Itanium servers and supercomputers. Like the Origin line, the 350 was made up of small 2U servers starting at $70,176, while the 3000 consisted of a large rack with up to 64 processors, spread out across bricks like in the Origin 3000. In its maximum 64 processor configuration, the Altix 3000 cost over $1.1 million. Though the Ultix 350 was the beginning of SGI's Itanium servers, and the fuel was seemingly intended to be the last MIPS workstation, SGI's MIPS servers were apparently still in need of an upgrade. On April 15, 2003, SGI announced the Origin 350, codenamed Chimera. Like the Origin 300 before it, it could function alone or with multiple units, and while it retained the same form factor, made numerous minor upgrades to the system. Origin 350s equipped with VPro V12 graphics boards were sold as the Onyx 350. Oddly, just three months later, on July 14, 2003, SGI announced another Chimera-based system known as the Onyx 4. Its main difference from the Onyx 350 was its use of ATI Fire GL graphics cards instead of SGI's own VPro or Infinite Reality. With the Onyx 4, Fuel, and Origin 350 announced, SGI's MIPS product line appeared to be over. However, later that day, after the announcement of the Onyx 4, SGI announced the SGI Tezro, the true final MIPS workstation. The Tezro, it seemed, was the result of a last-minute change of mind on SGI's part. Like the Fuel, the Tezro was based on the Origin 3000 architecture and used the same MIPS R14000 and R16000 processors, as well as the same RAM. While the Tezro was not wildly successful, it did perform exceptionally for video editing, which is seemingly worth where most of them were used. The Tezro also marked the return of SGI's original Cube logo to their systems, and displays it prominently with backlighting on the front panel. Due to being the last MIPS system ever produced by SGI, as well as being somewhat uncommon, the Tezro is still extremely valuable among businesses and hobbyists alike, with working units regularly selling for over $1,000 on both eBay and Nakochan. With Itanium set as the clear goal for SGI, an Itanium counterpart to the Tezro was clearly needed. In April of 2005, SGI announced the SGI Prism desk side, an Itanium workstation used using one or two Itanium processors running Linux in an aesthetically redesigned version of the Tezro case. The Prism was also available in larger half-rack and full-rack sizes, marketed for multi-user visualization work. 
Though it used Itanium processors and ran Linux like the Altix, the Prism included quick transit emulation software, enabling IRIX binaries to be run on Itanium. Like the Onyx 4, the Prism used ATI FireGL graphics cards. In July of 2005, SGI also announced the Altix 330, an entry-level 1U Linux server selling for just $7,000, making it the cheapest product ever to support Numalink. Not much is known about the Altix 330, as it was seemingly not particularly successful, likely due to other low-end Linux servers being available for less, albeit without Numalink. Its appearance is one of the most boring, least flashy designs ever produced by SGI, with an appearance more reminiscent of a Dell PowerEdge or Enterprise Ethernet switch than of SGI's past bright-colored products. Though SGI had many interesting new products, they were still struggling financially. Despite hiring advisors to help them return to profitability and receiving a new line of credit in mid-2005, SGI was still seriously at risk of running out of money entirely. In fact, by late 2005, SGI's market capitalization had fallen to just $120 million, only 109 times the sale price of their flagship Altix 3000. This was especially dire when compared to SGI's $7 billion figure of only 10 years before. On November 1st of 2005, Silicon Graphics Incorporated received notification from the New York Stock Exchange that their common stock, ticker symbol SGI, had been delisted due to failing to average a closing share price of $1 for 30 consecutive days. Despite their severe financial difficulties, SGI continued to release new products. In fact, just 14 days after they were delisted from the NYSE, on November 14th, 2005, SGI announced their Altix 4000 line, starting with the Altix 4700. Rather than the Altix 3000's brick-based design, the Altix 4700 consisted of numerous blades containing either CPUs and RAM, FPGAs, or RAM alone, which were inserted into rack mount enclosures called individual rack units, or IRUs. SGI also promised support for upcoming dual-core Itanium chips, and while the system was advertised as supporting up to 512 CPUs, SGI reportedly shipped some units with up to 2,048, with a theoretical maximum of 8,192. The system also supported up to 192 terabytes of memory, if memory blades were used. With SGI's financial problems still looming, in January of 2006, SGI hired Dennis McKenna as their new CEO and chairman of the board as part of a broader restructuring effort. Then, on May 8, 2006, SGI announced that it had filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection, which allowed them to continue operations and restructure in hopes of being able to repair financial problems. The motion was approved by the U.S. Bankruptcy Court two days later on May 10. SGI also got a new stock symbol, SGID.PK. However, once again, despite their financial difficulties, SGI was about to release a product. On June 26, 2006, SGI introduced the Altex 450, featuring dual-core Itanium CPUs and supposedly performing up to 2.5 times as well as the Altex 350. Like the Altex 4700, the 450 consisted of IRUs, up to four of which could be Numalinked together, creating a 38-CPU, 76-core system. The same day, SGI further expanded the Altex product line with the new Altex XE, an Intel Xeon x86-based line of Altex products. Though Nekochan Wiki lists 11 separate but seemingly closely related models, not much is known about Altex XE systems, and it appears that few, if any at all, are currently owned by hobbyists. From the few pictures available, it appears that the Altex XE was a standard rack mount server, not a Numalink enabled or IRU based system like the Altex 4700, but was in some cases sold for cluster use. Then, on September 6, 2006, the nine-year-long slow death of SGI's MIPS products finally came to a close with the announcement of the end of development of the MIPS product line and the IRIX operating system. After production was to end on the 29th of December, the last orders would be shipped in March. According to some, however, this was not entirely true. On a sunhelp.org mailing list post from 2015, a user named Jonathan Sturges said the following, They were also still manufacturing new fuel workstations at least as recently as 2010. I was at the factory and saw them myself. I was pretty surprised to see a MIPS machine still in production. While the truthfulness of this claim is somewhat debated, it is possible, seeing as the SGI fuel is still a supported product up until March 31st, 2018. On October 17th, 2006, SGI emerged from bankruptcy protection, cancelling its SGID.PK stock and issuing a new one with the symbol SGIC. SGI also moved their headquarters from Mountain View to Sunnyvale, selling its Amphitheater Parkway headquarters to Google, who named it the Googleplex. As an interesting note, their earlier North Shoreline headquarters is now occupied by the computer History Museum. Though SGI's CEO Dennis McKenna had only held his position for a little over a year, on April 9, 2007, SGI announced that they had selected a new CEO, Robert Bo Ewald. Ewald had worked for SGI in the past and was returning to the company after the limited success of his own company, Linux Networks, many assets of which would shortly be acquired by SGI. With immediate disaster avoided, exactly a year after the launch of the Altix 450 and Altix XE, on June 26, 2007, SGI announced yet another new Altix product, the Altix Ice 8200. 
Powered by x86-based Intel Xeon processors like the Altex Xe, and composed of IRUs like the Altex 4700, the Altex Ice emphasized simple deployment as a major selling point, an interesting decision given the often long construction times of high-performance computing systems. Though SGI had been focused entirely on its Altex high-performance computing products since 2005's Prism, on April 9, 2007, SGI was preparing to re-enter the visualization market with the SGI Virtue VN200, a rack-mount blade server similar in appearance to a single Altex IRU, and consistent of multiple standard Intel PCs with optional GPUs. Like essentially all SGI systems from the time, the VN200 is exceedingly rare and likely completely non-existent among hobbyists, as sales were poor and any units sold are likely still in service. Unfortunately, though they had avoided their first bankruptcy, SGI's financial situation was still extremely strained. As a result, SGI could not afford to develop their own workstation version of the Virtue, and instead opted to rebrand Box Technologies 3D Box Series PC as an SGI product. In fact, the only difference between the devices was that the square cooling mesh on the front of the unit was purple on the SGI version, and all box branding, including the disproportionately large box logo plate, had been completely replaced with SGI. Apart from that, the Virtue VS series was a completely normal PC, featuring a Xeon or Opteron processor, and Windows Vista or Linux. One Makochan user is known to own a Virtue VS workstation, obtained from the same eBay listing as the incredibly hard-to-find pictures used here came from. SGI, however, was clearly on the way out. As of December of 2008, SGI's market value was consistently below $35 million, with an annual net income of less than $500,000. As such, they received a delisting notification from NASDAQ, and on April 1st, 2009, SGI announced that they'd filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy once again, and that they planned to sell essentially all of their assets to Rackable Systems, a PC server manufacturer, for $25 million. The sale, ultimately finalized for $42.5 million, on May 11th, 2009, formally ended Silicon Graphics Incorporated's 27 year life. Rackable Systems, subsequently rebranded to Silicon Graphics International in order to maintain the SGI acronym, would go on to produce numerous products under numerous SGI brands, such as the Octane 3 desktop x86 cluster and Origin 400 x86 server, as well as numerous more closely related Altix follow-ups, also using x86 processors, before they themselves were purchased by Hewlett Packard Enterprise, or HPE, on August 11th, 2016. So that was it both part 7 and the entire history of SGI series. So uh, if you did enjoy the video and the series, then please do subscribe as it does help us grow. We're still a very, very small channel. And until next time, thanks for watching. Bye.